Hello and welcome. This is Professor Adams. We are going to look at elimination and augmented matrix methods of solving linear equations. We're going to just focus on two equations, two unknowns for this short little video. Um, this, of course, can be expanded out to larger systems with more than two equations and two unknowns. So first, we're going to take a look at the elimination by addition. Basically, with the elimination by addition, we're going to try to eliminate one of the two variables by multiplying whatever we need to make the coefficients match with uh, opposite signs. So when we add the two equations, either the x or the y or whatever variable you are using will be eliminated. We do like the elimination method versus the substitution method simply because we can expand this out to much larger systems. And it also leads us to the matrix method, which we'll be talking about in a minute. The downside is, is if you're doing this by hand, you're doing the elimination of method by hand and you're not throwing these into matrices, some of the coefficients may become larger numbers. And that's not a big deal. Um, now we're going to talk about the augmented matrix method. What we're talking about as a matrix is just an array of numbers within brackets and each part each number in there is an element or a part of an equation. Um, when we talk about the matrix size, we talk about how many rows it has and how many columns it has. With the matrices, we are allowed to interchange ro rows. We are allowed to multiply rows by a constant number, provided it's not zero. And we can add and subtract rows from each other, and then we can put that answer into one of the rows that we were working with. Now, we're going to be using um, the notation of R, I, and R, J. So I and J, we're talking about rows. So it'll be like row one and row two will switch. Or three times row one, we'll go back into row one. Or see here, we've got three times row one plus row two, and it's going to go back into row two or something like that. That arrow means that's where it's going to go. So it's going to be replaced. In this case, the example here, um, KRJ plus RI is going to go, the answer is going to go back into RI. So if we were given um, these two equations, 2x minus 3y equals 5, and x plus 2y is equal to negative 3, then we can write this in three different type of matrices. We can just write the coefficient matrix, we can write the constant matrix, and we can do the augmented matrix. Now notice how the first column is the x's, which are right here, the coefficients on the x's. The second column here are the y's, which are the coefficient here on the y's. And of course, this is our answers here to, not the answers to the system, but the answers to each equation, or the constant. And that is true when we look at the augmented matrix. Our augmented matrix, we have first the x coefficients, and then we have the y coefficients, and lastly, we have the constants or, or the answers of the, um, the answers to each equation, but not the answers to the system. So these are constants. Let's take a look at some pros and cons on matrices. So the great thing about using the matrix method is that you can easily put these in your calculators and computers and it can be solved. And it can be solved for much larger systems than what we're going to be working with today. The downside is, is if you're trying to do these by hand on any systems larger than two equations and two unknowns, it can be a little tedious. So that's why we're going to focus this just on the two equations and two unknowns. But you can obviously throw these into your calculator and solve these just as quickly, if not much quicker, than what I'll be doing today. So first we're going to do it by elimination, and then we're going to do it by the matrix method so that you can see how they're so interrelated to each other. If we were asked to solve by the elimination method, the first thing that we would do is rewrite the two equations on top of each other. So I have 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 8, and I have 5x plus 3y is equal to 1. Now in this case, what I'm trying to do is I'm either trying to eliminate the x's or the y's, and the way that we eliminate them is we need to have the coefficients match, but with opposite signs. And I can see right out of the gate that I will, if I just add these two equations, that the y's will be eliminated because 
one's a negative 3y and the other one's a positive 3y. So we're just going to go ahead and add these two equations. So I'm going to add my coefficients on the x, so I have 7x, and I'm going to add my coefficients on the y, and we get 0y. Then I'm going to add my constants, and I get negative 7. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 7, because I'm trying to isolate the x. So x is equal to negative 1. We've got the answer for negative 1, but because it's a system, we do need to find out what the y value is, because when we're talking about solving systems as we're asking where do these linear equations cross. So I have to find the y part, so it'll be an ordered pair. So I'm going to put this x in one of the two equations. It really doesn't matter which one. I'm going to put in the first one. So 2 multiplied by negative 1 minus 3y is equal to negative 8. And so I have negative 2 minus 3y is equal to negative 8. I'm going to go ahead and add 2 to both sides because, again, I'm trying to uh, isolate my y. And so I have 3y is equal to negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 3. And my answer for the y value is 2. So my answer to the system will be an ordered pair. So I write my x part first, so negative 1, comma, 2. Now, let's go ahead and throw this into a matrix. I'm going to go back to the top here, and I'm going to put this into a matrix. And so you can see how these are interrelated. So in my matrix, my first column are my coefficients on the x, which are 2 and 5. My second column is the coefficients on the y's, so negative 3 and positive 3. And I just do this dotted line there to show me that the, then my next column will be my constants which is negative 8 and 1. Now, unlike the previous example when I was doing it by elimination, I didn't have to really tell you what I was doing in terms of other than, hey, I'm going to add these. With this one, we're going to note it with the notations. And how I'm going to note this is I'm going to take row 1. I'm going to add to it row 2. I'm going to put the answer back into row 2. So with my matrix, because I'm changing row 2, I'm not changing row 1. I'm going to just rewrite row 1 just like it is. So 2, negative 3, and negative 8. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this addition. I am adding first my 2 and my 5, and that answer is going to go right here. So I'm going to add the 2 and the 5, and I get 7. The next thing I'm going to do is add the negative 3 and the 3, and that answer is going to go here. And so that becomes 0. And then the last one I'm going to do is add my negative 8 and 1. And the answer is going to go right here. And so I get negative 7. Go ahead and put my dash line here. This row right here is the same thing as this right here. So these two are pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to take that row and rewrite it. And I know that my first column is my x, so that's 7x is equal to, and my last column is my, my constant, so negative 7. And then I have the same thing right now as I do right up there. And so what I have, and I'd go through the same method if I didn't had already solved it once, is I'd get x is equal to negative 1. I would then, at this point, the way I'm solving the matrices this way, I would then put um, that negative 1 into one of the two equations that I started out with and find my y, and I will get the same thing as before, negative 1, comma 2. Now let's take a look at a second example. I'm going to take a look at this example, and again, I'm going to do it by the elimination method and by the matrix method. With the elimination method, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as 4x plus 3y is equal to 26. And I have 3x minus 11y is equal to negative 7. Unlike my previous example, in which the coefficients matched but with opposite signs, I'm going to have to do more than just add these two equations. So I'm going to have to decide, do I want to eliminate the x's or do I want to eliminate the y's? If I eliminate the x's, then I would find the lowest common multiple between this 3 and this 4. And I would multiply by whatever I need to make that 3 and the 4 become the lowest common multiple with opposite signs. Or 
I can go ahead and find the lowest common multiple between 3 and negative 11, the coefficients on the y, and then I wouldn't have to worry about having opposite signs because they're already there. I'm going to deal with the x's. So what I'm going to need to do is I need to take this first equation and my lowest common multiple between 4 and 3 is 12. So I'm, going to, my, I'm trying to get the coefficient on x to be 12. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 3 and this bottom equation by a positive 4. And that way I'll have coefficients on the x's that will match with opposite signs. So I'm going to multiply the negative 3 through on each one of these, co these coefficients or constants. And I end up with negative 12x uh, minus 9y is equal to, I'm going to have to get my calculator out. Probably shouldn't. You're probably thinking you should be able to do this in your head. Mm, sometimes. So 26 and then multiply it by a negative 3 gives me a negative 78. And then I'm going to multiply the 4 through on the second equation. All of those will be multiplied by 4. And so I have 12x minus 44y is equal to negative 28. Now I'm going to go ahead and add these two equations. And you'll notice again that my x's, my coefficients on my x's match with opposite signs. So they will cancel each other out. Now I'm going to go ahead and add 9, negative 9 and negative 44, and I get a negative 53y. I'm going to add my constants, and I have the 78, negative 78. I'm going to add to it the negative 28, and I get a negative 106. And so I'm going to divide both sides by the negative 53. And my answer for the y is going to be a positive 2. I'm going to put that back in one of the two equations, just like I did before. It doesn't matter which one I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it in the, in the top one. It doesn't matter, though. So I have 4x plus 3 multiplied by 2 is equal to 26. So 4x plus 6 is equal to 20. I'm going to subtract, subtract the 6 from both sides. And so I have 4x is equal to, uh, look at that, I already gave it, it was going to be 26. That should be 26, not 20. Subtract 6 from both sides, and I get 20 here. I'm going to divide by 4. And so I have x is equal to 5. Again, I'm going to write this as an ordered pair. So as an ordered pair, my answer is 5, 2. Now I'm going to go back up, and we're going to do this with a matrix method. So... With the matrix method, my first column are my x values, so that's 4 and 3. My second column is my y values, so 3 and negative 11. And then my constants are 26 and 7, negative 7. I want to eliminate the x's or y's. I'm going to eliminate the x's, and I, what I want to get is a 0 right here. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did with this elimination method, but I'm just going to note it slightly different. And the way in which I do this is I'm going to write this as a negative 3 row 1 plus, and then I had 4 row 2. And now I need to tell you where I'm going to put this. I'm going to put the answer when I do this multiplication of these two and add them together. I'm going to put it back in row 2. Once again, because I have not changed the first row, because the answer is going into row 2, it's not going into row 1. I haven't changed row 1. I'm going to rewrite row 1 just as it is. So 4, 3, 26. Now typically I will do this with a different color off to the side or really lightly with my pencil to show you the multiplications and also so that I don't lose what I'm doing. So I'm going to multiply the negative 3 times that 4 so I get a negative 12. I'm going to multiply that negative 3 times 3 and I get the negative 6, 9. I'm going to multiply the negative 3 times that 26, and I get the negative 78. I'm going to multiply the 4 in the second row by that 3, and I get 12. The 4 times the 11, negative 11, so it's a negative 44. And the 4 times that negative 7, which gives me a negative 28. Now, in, in my green pen or in a light pencil, I'm going to go ahead and do those additions and put the answer in that bottom row. So my answer in the bottom row is, again, negative 12 plus 12 is 0. 
the negative 9 and the negative 44 is a negative 53. And the negative 78 and the negative 28 is the negative 106. Now, if we compare what we did, that this row right here matches with this. So I'm going to rewrite that first row. So it is 0 times x, so I'm not going to put that in there. So negative 53y is equal to negative 106. And so I get the y value, which is 2, and I'll do the same thing for the x, and I get 5. So 5 comma 2 is the answer. Let's do one more example. Okay, here's our last example. First, I'm going to do it by the elimination method. So I have 7m plus 12n is equal to negative 1. I have 5m minus 3n is equal to 7. As I take a look at this, I realize that the coefficients on n are opposite signs, just like they were in my previous example. But the difference here is, is that 12 is a multiple of 3, so I only have to multiply one of the two equations by a constant to make the coefficients match with opposite signs. So on this bottom equation, I'm going to multiply every single term by 4. The top equation, I don't have to do anything to, so I'm going to just rewrite it as is. So I have 4 multiplied by 5, which is 20m, 4 multiplied by negative 3, which is a negative 12n, and then 4 multiplied by 7, which is 28. Just like before, I'm going to go ahead and add these two. I have 27m, my 12n and my negative 12n cancel each other out. On the other side of the equal sign, I get 27 as well. Divide both sides by 27, and so I've got m is equal to 1. Just like before, I need to put this in one of the two equations. I think this time I'll put in my second equation, no reason, other than I just want to. So I have 5 multiplied by 1 minus 3n is equal to 7. So I have 5 minus 3n is equal to 7. I subtract 5 from both sides, and I have negative 3n is equal to 2. I divide both sides by negative 3, and my n value is negative 2 thirds. Again, as this is an ordered pair, we're going to write it as an ordered pair. They are not x and y, but that's okay. We will write them in alphabetical order. Just like we do x comma y, we're going to do m comma n. And so my ordered pair is my m from above is 1, my n is negative 2 thirds. So that would be my answer. Now let's go ahead and do this with a matrix method. So my first column, before it was x, now it's going to be m, because it's the first in the alphabet. So it's 7 and 5. So in this case, these are my m coefficients. And then my second column will be my n coefficients, so 12 and negative 3. These are my n coefficients. And then my last column will be my constants, negative 1 and 7. So I am going to take and have row 1. I'm going to add to it just like I did before, a multiple of 4, 4, row 2, and I'm going to put the answer in row 2. Again, with a different colored pen or pencil or very lightly, I'm going to do that multiplication of 4 times each one of the elements in my last row. So I know that this is going to be 20, I know this is going to be negative 12, and I know that this is going to be 28. Just like before, my first row, even though I am adding row 2 to it. I am putting the answer in row 2, which means that row 1 does not change. So it's 7, 12, negative 1. And then I'm going to do my additions here. And I'm going to add the 7 and the 20, so I get 27. I'm going to add the 12 and the negative 12, and that becomes 0. And I'm going to add the negative 1 and the 28, which gives me 27. Now as I look here, that this row is basically this. So I'm going to just rewrite that. So 27m 
plus 0 n, I'm not going to write that, is equal to 27. And so I've got m is 27. And just like before, I would substitute that into one of the two equations to get my other one. So I have, so I have, let me change that. That should be 1. I guess I just really like 27 today. So that should be 1. m is equal to 1. And my ordered pair again is n, m is equal to 1, and n is equal to, we have negative 2 thirds. All right. I hope this helps as to how we go from the elimination method and how that aligns to the matrix method. My next video, we're going to talk about doing an row reduced echelon or Gauss-Jordan elimination method. But hopefully this helps with the understanding between this is elimination method and how it aligns to the matrix method. Thank you for joining me.